When you're at a store like Walmart or Amazon, it's clear cut what the price of an item is. But when you're at a car dealership, things are far more complex. The listed price is likely not the final price you'll end up paying. What's the difference between sticker price, invoice price, or MSRP? Which one is important and which one should you pay? Let's start with MSRP. This is the manufacturer's suggested retail price. It's the price the car maker recommends the dealer to sell it at. It'd be like grabbing a soda can at Walmart and being able to see Coca-Cola's suggested price for what it's worth, even though you end up paying Walmart's price at the end of the day. Of course, in reality, Coca-Cola doesn't put their suggested price on items at Walmart. So why do car makers set it? And why do dealerships publish it? Let's say you want to buy a smartphone from Apple. You know exactly what the price is. And it's most likely the lowest price you'll find because Apple is the manufacturer and direct distributor. They set their own prices. But car makers cannot mandate dealerships to sell at any particular price. That's because of state franchise laws. You can't directly buy a car from a manufacturer, but only from dealerships and third parties. Before state franchise laws existed, manufacturers were able to sell cars in many ways, but states created franchise laws to protect consumers and communities. So how does this protect us? If you're an entrepreneur and you want to open a store to sell cars, you have lots of expenses like facility rental, employees, utilities, marketing costs. That's why you have to mark up the price when you sell each car to cover your expenses. If the car maker was able to sell cars directly and compete with you, they have an unfair advantage because they can sell for a cheaper price than you. They're larger than local businesses, they have unlimited resources, and they don't have the unique overhead you do. That's why governments set regulations to protect local businesses from the car manufacturer itself. And all this is why car makers cannot sell directly to the public. Actually, this is a win-win for both the car maker and the dealership. Both support each other and work together. Let's get back to Coca-Cola. It's a similar situation there. You as a consumer don't buy soda directly from Coca-Cola in Atlanta, but you get it from a reseller. Now we're talking about a car though which costs thousands of dollars, not a can of pop that's just a dollar. If I said you can buy soda directly from the Coca-Cola factory in Atlanta and it's 50 cents cheaper, would you go there? Likely not. But if I said the same thing about a car and it meant you could save $5,000, then would you go? Very likely. Or even if you don't want to go, you'd consider paying someone else to go pick up the car for you for a nominal fee, if it meant you can save that much. Some might argue that car makers sold directly to consumers, they would still need to cover their overhead and therefore price would be marked up anyway. It's like that example of soda versus a car. It all depends on how much markup you're willing to pay. Let's get back to pricing and dig deeper. So what's the invoice price? Let's say you're in Florida, you grow oranges and you sell orange juice. You had a good year and your crop volumes are good. Would your oranges next year be cheaper? Probably yes, because you have a lot of extra stock now. And also, so do your competitors, which means supply will stay high. But you won't go too cheap because your expenses like labor, facilities, and utilities costs might stay the same. For example, a utility company won't give you a lower cost just because your crop yield was good. It's similar with a car maker. External factors like economic situation, pandemic, and available supplies impact the car maker's expenses. So the car maker may or may not give a discount to a dealership. Sometimes car makers want to support the dealership and help them sell the cars, since unsold cars on the floor means it's a fixed cost to the dealer. The amount that the dealer pays the car maker is the invoice price. It's different from MSRP. The invoice price can go up or down depending on other facts. Invoice price is less than MSRP because it doesn't include the dealership markup. Now you might think you understand the invoice price, but actually it's not that clear cut because the invoice price is just a rough estimate. That is because there's a thing called holdback. Let's say you're a local reseller of eggs. A local chicken farm produces eggs. Eggs expire after three months. During those three months, the farm continues to produce more eggs. So they want you to sell as much as possible so they can continue selling to you without interruption. That's why the farm gives an incentive to the reseller. For every egg you sell, Within one week of delivery, the farm gives you 3% the cost you bought the eggs for. It's like getting an incentive discount. But let's say it takes about two months to sell eggs. In that case, the farm gives you a smaller percentage. This is a simple illustration to help illustrate how the holdout, or this incentive, impacts the invoice price. In the car world, the car maker sets a holdback, which is usually 2 or 3% of the invoice price, or MSRR, although typically it's of the latter. So even if you know the invoice price that the dealer plays car make, you can't really see what they really make in the car since you don't know what their holdout is. 
Okay, now that we have an understanding of the MSRP versus invoice price versus holdback, you probably are wondering what is the difference between MSRP and invoice price. Actually, this difference can be quite wide, proportionally and by dollar amount. For example, an economy car without any additional add-ons will usually have the lowest difference between MSRP and invoice price, but a popular luxury car at the highest trim level will have a large difference. The difference between what the dealer pays the car maker and the sales price you pay is the dealer's price profit margin. It's no surprise that dealers want to maximize their profit as much as possible. That's why they usually start negotiations with the MSRP because MSRP is usually the highest price you'll otherwise see before the add-ons. It's the price you see in all ads. Most dealers don't want to post their base prices higher than that. So, how much negotiation room do you have? Well, there's a thing called market value price. That's what the other consumers are paying for the same car in your local area. Let's go back to the example of oranges. Except now you're a reseller of orange juice in California. If other stores can be reselling it for 10 bucks, you usually set your price closer to that. But if you're a grocery store in Florida, you might resell OJ at $5 because that's what other competing stores are selling for. So market value price depends on local pricing, supply and demand, incentives, and so on. Typically, market value price is somewhere between the invoice price and MSRP. To understand this further, let's talk about Austin, Texas versus Silicon Valley, California. The latter has lots of high-tech companies which drive up the cost of living and salaries. People have very high salaries, let's say $200,000 up, and they can easily pay higher rent than an employee at Walmart. But costs just keep getting higher. This is one of the reasons why tech companies are migrating to Austin where the cost of living is lower. This means employee salaries can be lower, but they forget that they're looking at current market value. In a few years, the market values of Austin will be higher as more tech companies arrive. That's why the market value price is better for the buyer than the MSRP, but it can vary per location. If you visit any car reseller online now, you'll see cars are higher priced than normal. It's because of demand. Demand gets higher when supply is limited or low, and this drives up the market value price. But dealers can sell for higher than MSRP? Yes, of course they can. And not only because of high demand or low supply. Some dealerships use this opportunity to sell other add-ons to increase profit. For example, better floor mats, cargo net, or wheel locks. But don't fall for that bait because they usually bundle those at high price and you can buy similar items elsewhere like on Amazon for cheaper price and better quality. How much of the MSRP can you negotiate? The crucial thing is market value. Any limitation on supply usually increases MSRP. For popular cars in high demand, if you're able to get a few hundred dollars off, that's actually a good deal. If a car has a lot of recalls or is a less popular design or brand had issues with another line, then you might be able to get a better discount. If you're really fortunate, you might be able to get less than the invoice price. If the dealer gives you an incentive like a cash rebate, many dealerships typically start negotiations at MSRP. And it was especially like that before the pandemic. But after the pandemic passes and car industry returns to normal, the best approach as a consumer is to use the dealer's asking price as the starting point. Because oftentimes you'll see the dealership has already discounted the car from MSRP. Your best bet is to do research first on the car, even before you get to the dealership. Have the market value price in mind as your target. Other things to consider include the manufacturer to customer rebate programs. This is a discount from the car maker to qualified buyers. Since the rebate, is at the car maker's level, you can use this at any dealership. Sometimes you can get a rebate between $500 to $5,000. But also know that there are other fees. There's a destination charge. You can't avoid this fee. That's what the car maker charges the dealership to deliver your car. Think of a restaurant. You pay for the main dish, but you also pay for a tip on a service. The restaurant owner pays the waiter's wages, as they do in most countries. But in the U.S., you also pay for the service, which includes the waiter bringing the food to you. The restaurant that they're pricing to look lower. Same thing with a car. Technically, they could or should have just added the destination fee to the MSRP or invoice price. But we need to understand that delivering a car to Alaska versus a state next door to you will have a vastly different cost. Ever wonder why we don't pay destination fee when you buy an iPhone or an Apple store? You do actually, but it's already included in the product price. A smartphone is small and a low cost to deliver a car is huge and delivery price obviously isn't cheap. You'll also have other fees that will get added to the top of the calculated fee. This includes taxes, titling, and other required state or government fees. 
So if you have a good running car, it's wise to hang on to it, especially during this time when prices are high. I know some people see that prices have jumped and they think that they can sell their car at a jacked up price too, but they forget if they sell their car and buy another one, well then they'll be buying a replacement car also for a higher than normal price. Personally, I feel it's best to hang on to your car until the market normalizes. If you like this video, please share it with family and friends to help them make a good decision when buying a car. Thanks for your support.